Here we have two different blood types. After adding saline solution, we mix them like this and examine them under a microscope. What phenomena can you observe? Today, we'll explore blood types. To start, after lightly pricking my finger, I drop some saline solution on it, then cover it with a glass slide and magnify it under a microscope. You can see these are all red blood cells. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Red blood cells constitute nearly 45% of our blood. All human blood looks similar, but it's categorized into various blood types based on the antigens present on the surface of these red blood cells. The most well-known system is the ABO blood group, which classifies blood types based on the presence of type A or B antigens. This classification is crucial because it helps prevent serious complications that can arise during blood transfusions from incompatible blood types. The reason why transfusions from different blood types can cause problems is that our bodies contain antibodies that trigger a strong immune response when red blood cells with unfamiliar antigens are introduced. To test blood types, we use reagents that contain antibodies specific to each antigen. First, I mixed my blood with the reagent. Since I am type O, my red blood cells lack antigens, and therefore, there was no reaction. Curious about other reactions, I took a sample from a type B friend nearby. After dropping his blood on a slide and adding the reagent, we observed the blood clotting due to the reaction with the antibodies specific to type B. This confirmed that my friend was indeed type B. If you magnify the clotted blood under a microscope, it's quite shocking. I had never seen a coagulation reaction under a microscope before either, but the red blood cells were so clumped that their shapes were indistinguishable. This clumping, likely due to the destruction of red blood cells by the antibodies, is fascinating. Interesting, isn't it? Since these antibodies also exist in our bodies, a similar reaction might occur when we mix blood of different types. To verify this, I mixed the blood again, added some saline solution, and observed. Initially, it didn't seem to solidify as strongly as it did with the reagent. Upon closer inspection under the microscope, I found partially clumped red blood cells as shown here. Interestingly, the actual blood didn't exhibit as strong an agglutination reaction as the reagent. This is because the test reagent contains a high concentration of antibodies that react strongly, making them visible, whereas the antibody concentration in just one drop of blood is relatively low compared to the number of red blood cells reducing the activity of the antibodies. Therefore, mixing a few drops outside the body in this manner does not produce a significant reaction. However, when foreign blood actually enters the body, the immune system reacts vigorously, leading to a strong agglutination reaction. Hence, if transfused incorrectly, this strong reaction can cause red blood cells to clump together, clogging capillaries, creating serious complications. As a rule, blood transfusions should only be conducted between people with compatible blood types. However, in emergencies, a small amount of blood from another blood type may be transfused. In such cases, compatibility and the antigens on the red blood cells are critical criteria for small transfusions. For example, type O red blood cells don't have any antigens which means they can be safely given in small amounts to anyone, regardless of their blood type. However, type AB blood has both A and B antigens. This makes it tricky because you can't give even a little bit of type AB blood to someone with a different blood type without risking a reaction. There was once a popular personality test that suggested people with type O blood are generally gentle. 
While there's no scientific basis linking blood type to personality, biologically speaking, type O is kind of the universal donor, which might seem pretty friendly. Interesting, isn't it? That's all for our blood type exploration today. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This is Fishy Science, where we dive into the mysteries of science.